This is the AM96, a train so unusual it turns heads across Europe. That rubber-covered nose might seem strange, maybe even ugly, but it hides some of the smartest engineering you'll ever see on world rails. This isn't just another commuter train. It's a bold, innovative design packed with features that even US trains could learn from. So is this bizarre front end just for style, or is there real genius behind it? Let's uncover the secrets of the AM96, right here on On The Trains. AM96 Design AM96 is a multi-car electric train in Belgium, launched in 1996, manufactured by Bombardier Transportation in Bruges. The design of the train was inspired by the famous Danish IC3, with the distinctive feature of a flexible rubber locomotive. It runs at a maximum speed of 99.4 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour, equivalent to some commuter rail trains in the US. Using 3 kV DC, and some versions also support 25 kV AC. The train is equipped with four electric motors, with a total capacity of about 1,400 horsepower, durable enough to withstand 20 starts per hour without overloading, and the failure rate is also extremely low, less than 0.5% per year. Maintenance costs are about 50,000 euros per train per year, 20% cheaper than many trains of the same type. Today, with the upgrade to the ERTMS digital signaling system, the AM96 remains a mainstay of the SNCB network, contributing to carry 750,000 passenger journeys per day across Belgium. In terms of appearance, the AM96 is truly impressive. The most striking feature is the flexible rubber locomotive, which at first glance looks different from most other trains in the world. The nose of the locomotive is also designed as a 1.5 meter long crash pad, protecting the driver on routes mixed with freight and passenger trains. But this rubber nose is not only aesthetic, it also has a very important technical role. Each AM96 train usually consists of three cars, but can be flexibly combined into trains of up to 12 cars. The secret lies in the unique rubber head. When the train is coupled, the front door folds down, combining with the soft rubber to form a sealed joint, turning the joint into a seamless corridor. Thanks to this, passengers and staff can move comfortably between carriages, and the train separation is faster and safer, while also helping to protect the locomotive from dirt and weather effects. In addition, some parameters are also worth noting. Each car is about 26 meters long, almost 2.9 meters wide, and about 4.1 meters high. The Scharfenberg locking system allows for extremely fast attachment or detachment of trains, providing optimal support for both medium and long distance intercity routes. In terms of aerodynamics, this design is also extremely smart. When the train is running at maximum speed, wind resistance is one of the factors that directly affects performance and power consumption. Thanks to the flexible rubber layer combined with the tightness of the cars, a seamless aerodynamic surface is created instead of leaving gaps like many other train models. This not only helps to significantly reduce wind resistance by up to 10 to 15%, but also limits turbulence and noise when the train passes through tunnels or runs parallel to other trains. The emergency braking system can stop the train within 300 meters when running at 120 kilometers per hour and all materials meet the EN45545 fire resistance standard. In addition, the amount of electricity consumed to maintain high speed is also reduced, helping to save energy and prolong the life of mechanical systems and engines. Passengers in the carriage also benefit significantly. The train compartment is quieter, has less vibration, and the air in the train is more stable when traveling through windy sections. What do you think? So even inside the train, is there anything different from the normal train models? Let's explore. And this is our new railway channel, and we're aiming for 5,000 subscribers. If you're passionate about railway infrastructure and public transport news, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the journey. Your support means a lot. Thank you. AM96 interior. Step inside, the space is really spacious, with a capacity of about 200 to 250 people, of which 150 to 180 seats are arranged in a 2 plus 2 style, 
the rest is standing space for 50 to 70 passengers during peak hours. In other words, it is very reasonably calculated for short and crowded routes, such as the airport line. Large windows, nearly 1.5 meters high and 80 centimeters wide, allow natural light to flood in, creating a spacious, bright feeling. Combined with a powerful air conditioning system of up to 30 kilowatts, the temperature in the cabin is always maintained at a comfortable level, about 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Besides, there is at least one toilet for the disabled with a closed flushing system to avoid pollution. The toilet has a large space, about 1.5 meters by 1.2 meters, handrails, alarm buttons, low sinks, and easy to open doors for wheelchairs. What I really like about the AM96 is the integration. The train floor is only 0.8 meters low, and there are two wheelchair areas, wide enough to turn around and have seat belts. Even when it was launched in 1996, the design was far ahead of European standards at the time. The soundproofing is also very good, keeping noise levels below 65 decibels. The LED lights were upgraded in 2015 to 300 lumens, la X. And a neat folding table is enough to work or put in a laptop. However, or any other modern amenities, it shows that the train is old. More improvements are needed for the train's facilities. Now that we've taken a closer look at this train, do you think Amtrak's future single or double-deck train designs should adopt features like the rubber connections seen on the AM96? Feel free to share your opinion. But the surprises don't stop there, as the departure station is also a masterpiece. Antwerp and Central, Belgium's masterpiece of railway cathedral. Antwerp and Central, located right on the Koningen Astridplein in the heart of Antwerp, is truly an architectural masterpiece and is often called the Railway Cathedral because of its splendor. The station was inaugurated in 1905 under King Leopold II and was designed by architect Louis de la Censerie. He was inspired by great works such as the Pantheon in Rome and the Lucerne Station in Switzerland. The most prominent features are the 44-meter-high central dome, the intricate mosaic floors, the shiny brick walls, and the 185-meter-long glass iron roof. This place is not only a train station but also a cultural icon, having been recognized by many world rankings as one of the most beautiful stations. After a major renovation between 1993 and 2009, Antwerp and Central was equipped with a modern two-level underground tunnel, allowing high-speed trains such as Eurostar and Thales to pass through without turning around. Inside, there is also a diamond shopping mall, a Plopsa Station children's playground, and seamless connections with trams, buses, public bicycles, and taxis. Today, it is an important transport hub, connecting Brussels, Amsterdam, and Paris, serving thousands of passengers every day. Because it is located right in the center, it only takes about 10 minutes by tram to reach Grote Markt, the city's famous square. Antwerp and Central is not just a station, but also an attractive destination, where visitors can take the train while admiring a jewel of Belgium, a blend of classic architecture and modern technology. The station is luxurious, but are the train tickets affordable? In Belgium, fares on the AM96 are quite flexible. For example, Brussels to Antwerp, about 28 miles, approximately 30 to 40 minutes, costs about 9 to 12 euros in second class, or 13 to 18 euros in first class, and even less if you use youth, senior, or weekend discounts. Talking about the US, a similar suburban trip on New Jersey Transit or Metro North, 20 to 30 miles, 30 to 40 minutes, usually costs between 10 to $15 one way, sometimes even more in peak hours, and discounts are limited compared to Europe. In California, Caltrain from San Francisco to Palo Alto, about 28 miles, 40 minutes, costs around $7 to $10, but that's without the variety of special passes and youth deals that SNCB offers. In general, they're pretty similar. However, what I found quite impressive is that the AM96 connects to other public transportation options like trams or buses to pick up and drop off passengers after getting off the train. I think the US should learn from this close connection. So while Belgian tickets are not cheap by EU standards, the wide range of discounts and flexible passes makes them feel much more affordable and passenger friendly than most American commuter rail fares. And these are all the reasons why the Belgian AM96 train is so strange with its appearance and infrastructure. Today's episode will stop here.
If anyone has tried this train, please comment below to let me know more. See ya!